Hi everyone, this is Stacey and welcome to my channel. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. For today's video, I'm going to talk to you about Graptopetalum mendocei. So, ito yung mother plant ko ng Graptopetalum mendocei. This is the first pot and 3 years na ito sa akin. So, I just bought this Graptopetalum mendocei. Token size lang siya as in maliit na pot lang siya na medyo lush naman and then I pot it in a small pot hanggang sa pag nag, nag lush siya nirepot ko nang nirepot hanggang sa ganito na siya kalaking pot so marami na ako nakuhang cuttings na ginamit ko sa propagation and even sa arrangement from this pot so ito yung pinaka mother pot ng aking crop to petal so while I'm flexing to you yung mga pots of crop to petal that I have here in my garden, I wanted to share some information as well as care tips about crop to petal So, it is a small succulent shrub with greenish gray leaves that create rosettes. Its gray leaves tend to get darker and give a purplish color when it is stressed. It also gives flower that are small, white, and star-shaped. Craptopeta lumendose needs strong sunlight. You have to make sure that you plant it in a place where it can get enough sunlight to grow beautifully. Full to partial sunlight is required, and it is better to plant it outdoors than indoors. In my experience, Craptopeta lumendose is best to place in a rain or shine area. Just like every other succulent, Craptopeta lumendose does not need much watering. Remember that the water should not sit on the soil for too long, and excess watering should be avoided. Water them when the soil is completely dry. Plant your Craptopeta lumendose on a well-draining soil mixture to ensure that the ground allows the water to flow freely and continuously when you are watering it. Craptopetalum mendocei doesn't also require too much repotting. You may repot your plant once it outgrow its spot just to allow the plant to grow fully. Cutting is only helpful if you want to maintain the size and shape of your plant. You may also cut your grab the petal mendesi if there are dead or drying leaves or even branches. And it is also one way for you to make your grab the petal mendesi more lush when you cut it. I use Osmocot to fertilize my grab the petal mendesi as needed. So this one, the Graptopetalum mendocei you are seeing right now in the video, is spotted in a glass jar but it doesn't have a hole. The potting mix I use here is not my usual potting mix. It is almost soilless. Most of them are stones. But it is located in a rain or shine area. I also have my Graptopetalum mendocei in the front yard of our house. So this is potted in a tall white pot that is made of clay. So as you can see, it's quite purplish in color and the stem of the Graptopetalum mendocei is old already. It's like woody and it is also lush. I always get some cuttings from this pot use in my propagation especially when I need grab the petal mendocei for my arrangement I have another pot here hanging driftwood 
So this one is an old pot also of my Graptopeta lumendose. I think it is already one year. As you can see, the stem is quite woody also. I also get some cuttings from here to make it more lush. Actually, it got dehydrated. That's why there's no purple color because I watered it. This one has been planted here for almost a year. It is planted in a big basin arrangement. It got dehydrated. That's why I'm watering it every week so it can recover. So right now, it already recovered but you cannot see any purplish color and no sign of stress color. So right now, I'm going to show you closely how does a Mendoza look like. So, as you can notice, yung kanyang tips ng leaves is somewhat rounded. And yung rosette niya is much bigger than the Mirini. And you can see also in the video, the purplish color na binibigay niya pag stress. Now, I'm going to show you naman how does a Graptopetalum Rene look like up close. So, as you can see, it is very obvious. It is much smaller than the Graptopetalum Mendoza. Graptopetalum Rene is always confused with Graptopetalum Mendoza. But the difference, Graptopetalum Rene leaf is smaller and looks pink when it is stressed. So, para mas makita natin yung difference ng Graptopetal Mendoza and Mirini, let's put them beside each other. So, ayan. Mas maliit talaga ang Graptopetal Mirini and parang mas ano, patusok yung kanyang leaves compared sa Graptopetal Mendoza. Graptopetal Mendoza is somewhat rounded and has a bigger set than Graptopetal Mirini. I want to give an update also kung kamusta na ba yung ating pinopagate na Graptopetalum Mirini. So, ito yung pot na may propagation natin ng leaf and some cuttings kasi hindi nagkasya dun sa isang pot yung mga cuttings. And I wanted to show you up close na may tumupo na doon sa ating leaf propagation although maliit pa lang siya and wala pang roots. So, it's starting to grow babies pa lang. And I have been moisting it for the leaf propagation and once a week naman dito sa ating cuttings. So let's see kung mabubunod ko pa yung graft petal ng mirini sa pat. So hindi na siya mabunod, ibig sabihin may roots na siya. So, I will be placing it still in the garage area for one week and expose it to the veranda area which is a rain or shine area after a week. Siyempre, hindi kompleto ang ating trivia sa Graptopetalum Mendoza if I am not going to show you how do I propagate my Graptopetalum Mendoza. So, when it comes to propagation of Graptopetalum Mendoza, we can do cuttings or leaf propagation. Pag leaf propagation, it's only the same with what we did in the Graptopetalum Mirinae. Collect all the healthy leaves that you can collect and put it in a soil mix. And then after two days, you can moist it from time to time. And then it will produce a baby. Just make sure that you get the healthy leaves. And we can start potting now the cuttings of Graptopetalum Mendoza. So I'll be using a used pot and used soil mix. So we have to add osmoco to fertilize the soil as well as to give nutrients to the succulent that we are going to pot. All we have to do is put the cuttings of Graptopetalum Mendoza on top of the dry soil mixture. So I'm using dry soil mixture whenever I repot a new succulent. Or even, I repot cuttings for propagation like what we are doing right now. I don't moist it after I pot it. I have to wait 2 days after before I moist it. 
Sometimes, I also, it takes me a week also to remember na I have to moist it pala. So, all we have to do is fill up the pot with all these cuttings. I just cut this cup to petal mendese an hour ago. So, it's okay kasi we are using dry soy mix. We don't have to worry that there will be a stem rot. Katulad lang din ito ng ginawa natin sa grab to petal mirini. We cut it, then we pot it. So, hindi kasi maselan ang grab to petal mendese and mirini. Parehas lang sila ng characteristics. So, my grab to petal mirini and mendose about it at the same time 3 years ago I only have a small token size and look how many propagation and how large my pots are of Graptopetalum Mendoza and Mirini so I recommend this Graptopetalum Mirini and Mendoza for beginners especially yung mga nasa lowland kasi napakatiba niya talaga since na stable ko yung Graptopetalum Mirini and Mendoza ko I put them on a rain or shine area and they are striving so well there. They love the sunlight that they are getting from morning to afternoon. They love the rain that they are getting. I never experienced having a mushy grab the petal mirni or mendose. I mean, I never experienced having them overwatered watered even 7 days of continuous raining. So, they really love rain water as long as their potting mix is a well draining one. So, we're finally done potting the Graptopetal Mendoza. So, this is how it looks like. So, I have here actually a small tray of cuttings from the succulent arrangement that we have uprooted last month. So, it's been a month that they, that they stay here in this tray. So, I sorted it out to get kung ano pa yung pwede nating ipropagate through cuttings. So, eto na sila yung mga nakuha ko. May grab to petalum mirini, grab to petalum mendose, but I'm going to combine them in one pot. So, same procedure lang. Use pot, use soil mix, put fertilizer, osmocot, and then put the cuttings of the grab to petalum mirini and mendose on the pot. So, pag naging lush na tong pot na to, mas maa-identify na natin kung ano yung Mendoza and Mirini. Kasi pareho, actually, most of the cuttings that I'm potting right now is dehydrated. So, nahihirapan din ako identify kasi pare-pareho silang maliliit. Pero makikita nyo pa rin na mas plump or mas pabilog talaga ang leaves ng Mendoza kesa sa Mirini. So, enjoy watching while I'm filling up this pot with Grab the Pet Mirini and Mendoza. So, we're finally done potting them all. So, dito ka lang sila nilalagay sa garage area. So, it, it is placed in a wooden rock in the third and fourth layer. So, ito yung grab the petal mirini natin na well-rooted na siya that we can place already in a rain or shine area. But I'm still waiting for another week before I put it in the veranda area. And then below, we have the Grab the Petal Mendoza. So, I have to wait for, I think, one week to check again if they are rooted already. Then, we can place it already after another week in a rain or shine area. 
So the other fat is just beside which is a combination of mendose and mirini. So that's all that I can share for you today. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe and share my video to your family, friends, and relatives. Bye for now. See you in my next video. Bye. God bless us all. Bye-bye.